So what we established in the previous video is that we should create equipment that is tunable at lower bands. So we have seen that our equipment where we try to use tunable filters at higher frequencies, we're going to get worse selectivities. We're going to end up in some cases where we have a tunable filter that might have a bunch of interference from adjacent channels. So we've seen that that's not such a good idea. We've, we've talked about how the lower frequency uh, filters are going to have uh, better responses. And we've also talked about having the spacing out the, the channels even further is not a good solution because that uh, is expensive because you're wasting that bandwidth. So the next idea is that we should come up with a way of taking our channel of interest and putting it down to some intermediate channel. And by doing this, we're going to be able to make filters at this intermediate frequency that work much better than the filters at this high frequency. And not only that, the tunable filter, as we mentioned, may have different responses over various frequency ranges, right? You may have a better response at the low frequency compared to the high frequency. However, if you take each one of these channels and were to move it down to an intermediate frequency, we no longer need a tunable filter. We just need one filter that works at that intermediate frequency. If we do that, then we don't have to make tunable filters. It's at a lower frequency, and this is going to result in better performance. We don't have to tune it. Tunable filters usually perform worse, and we don't have to use a high frequency. Lower frequency filters have better response. So, uh, going back, thinking about our mixing process, right? We can mix our carrier frequency uh, with uh, by multiplying it by a frequency, a mixing frequency. And so, this was the result that we saw previously, where we said that we could. Uh, take a message that's been modulated, uh, put it into a multiplier. We could use like a nonlinear modulator, one of our modulating devices. We can uh, mix those two things together, use some mathematically, we can use some trigonometric identities to see that we're going to get two different waves that have some sum sum and difference properties. Those sum and difference properties result in a case where regardless of what the carrier frequency is, so we have our carrier frequency at uh, here, but we could also choose a carrier frequency at carrier frequency plus delta f. So regardless of where our carrier frequency is at that higher thing, if we mix it with some uh, mix wave, some mix frequency wave, we can see that this is going to result in some xt that has two waves. So no matter what our delta omega is, so if we are dealing with this channel, if we're dealing with uh, channel one, two, three, four, each one of these has some different, uh, you know, delta omega. So no matter what delta omega we use, when we put it together, when we force it together with this mix wave, we're going to end up with a modulated wave that has two components. So one at some higher frequency and one at our intermediate frequency. And just like we saw in those previous videos, we can put that through a bandpass filter and get a message that is modulated with just some intermediate frequency. And that intermediate frequency can be down here. We call it intermediate because it's not quite baseband, right? It's not at our baseband, but it's definitely not as high as our carrier frequency is. So when we do this, right, we have a um, omega C carrier plus some channel. So our omega C is the center, but this could be an, another channel that's adjacent. And our mix it becomes omega C plus that whatever that extra part is that you need for your channel, plus that intermediate frequency. Okay, so how does this work in practice? We will look at that in the next video.